Good morning, Pray First. Good morning, good morning, good morning. If you have noticed, it is getting a little bit darker in the mornings at seven o'clock than it has been. And that means we are steadily cruising towards the fall. Yay! I love fall. Do y'all like fall? What's your favorite season? Hey, Tawana. Hey, Sean. Mine is definitely fall. I love fall, followed by spring, and then winter, and then, no, I'd say summer, then winter. I don't know. It's a toss-up. Anyway, hey, Corinne. Good morning, Donna. I hope you guys are having a great Monday morning. Hey, Kelly. It's a great day to have a great day. Hey, Michelle. We are um, in Genesis 24, finishing up chapter 24 from where Pastor Dennis had um, stopped sort of in the middle around verse 26, 27. So we'll be picking up right in there. If you have your Bibles, I would encourage you to get those out if you can. If not, um, then just listen along with us. And um, hey, Brenda, it's a good day. It's a good morning. Hey, Christine, hope you're feeling well. If you will, hashtag live if you're here at the seven o'clock hour, hashtag recorded if you're here at any other time. And um, it's Monday. Are you having a great day? <laughs> I know so it's, it's it's one of those things, you know, Monday mornings we have a chance to change our perspective and and think of it as a fresh start for the week or we can call it the drudgery. But let that just seems to mess up your whole day if you just take it like that, you know. You've been allowed to wake up this morning and take a deep breath. <sighs> right? So, anyway, this is Pray First, a conversation we have Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., and we are reading through the Bible in the message version. We have made it all the way through New Testament and have begun the Old Testament, and we are into Genesis pretty good so far. And so I'm about to pick up in Genesis chapter 24, and verse 28 is where I'm going to start. All right, here we go. Oh, I didn't do the whole like emoticon. So give the thumbs, give the hearts and all that kind of stuff and make a bouquet of welcome for everybody that's here saying good morning and all that good stuff. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Courtney. Yes, Courtney, let's make it a good one. Here we go. Genesis chapter 24, verse 28. And the girl was off and running, telling everyone in her mother's house what had happened. Rebecca had a brother named Laban. Laban ran outside to the man at the spring. He had seen the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister and had heard her say, the man said this and this and this to me. So he went to the man and there he was, still standing with his camels at the spring. Laban welcomed him. Come on in, blessed of God. Why are you standing out here? I've got the house ready for you and there's also a place for your camels. So the man went into the house. The camels were unloaded and given straw and feed. Water was brought to bathe the feet of the man and the men with him. Then Laban brought out food. But the man said, I won't eat until I tell my story. Laban said, go ahead, tell us. The servant said, I'm the servant of Abraham. God has blessed my master. He's a great man. God has given him sheep and cattle, silver and gold, servants and maidservants, camels and donkeys. And then to top it off, Sarah, my master's wife, Sarah, my master's wife gave him a son in her old age, and he has passed everything on to his son. My master made me promise, don't get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I live. No, go to my father's home, back to the family, and get a wife for my son there. I said to my master, but what if the woman won't come with me? He said, God before him, I've walked faithfully, will send his angel with you and he'll make things work out so that you'll bring back a wife for my son from my family from the house of my father then you'll be free from the oath if you go to my family and they won't give her to you you will also be free from the oath well when i came this very day to the spring i prayed god god of my master abraham make things turn out well in this task i've been given I'm standing at this well when a young woman comes here to draw water and I say to her, please give me a sip of water from your jug. And she says, not only will I give you a drink, I'll also water your camels. Let that woman be the wife God has picked out for my master's son. I had barely finished offering his prayer, this prayer when Rebecca arrived, her jug on her shoulder. She went to the spring and drew water and I said, please, can I have a drink? 
she didn't hesitate. She held out her jug and said, drink. And when you're finished, I'll also water your camels. I drank and she watered the camels. I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethuel, whose parents were Nahor and Milcah. I gave her a ring for her nose, bracelets for her arms, and bowed in worship to God. I praised God that God of my master Abraham, who had led me straight to the door of my master's family to get a wife for his son. Now, tell me what you are going to do. If you plan to respond with a generous yes, tell me. But if not, tell me plainly so I can figure out what to do next. Laban and Bethuel answered, This is undeniably from God. We have no say in the matter, either yes or no. Rebekah is yours. Take her and go. Let her be the wife of your master's son, as God has made plain. When Abraham's servant heard their decision, he bowed and worshiped before God. Then he brought out gifts of silver and gold and clothing and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave expensive gifts to her brother and mother. He and his men had supper and spent the night, but first thing in the morning, they were up. He said, send me back to my master. Her brother and mother said, let the girl stay a while, say another 10 days and then go. He said, oh, don't make me wait. God has worked everything out so well. Send me off to my master. They said, we'll call the girls, we'll ask her. They called Rebecca and asked her, do you want to go with this man? She said, I'm ready to go. So they sent them off, their sister Rebecca with her nurse and Abraham's servant with his men. And they blessed Rebekah saying, you're our sister, live bountifully and your children triumphantly. Rebecca and her sister, uh, Rebecca and her maids mounted the camels and followed the man. The servant took Rebecca and set off for home. Isaac was living in Negev. He had just come back from a visit to Beer Lahai Roy. In the evening, he went out into the field. While meditating, he looked up and saw camels coming. When Rebecca looked up and saw Isaac, she got down from her camel and asked the servant, Who is that man out in the field coming toward us? That is my master. She took her veil and covered herself. After the servant took Isaac, the whole story of the trip, Isaac took Rebecca into the tent of his mother, Sarah. He married Rebecca and she became his wife and he loved her. So Isaac found comfort after his mother's death. Chapter 25. Abraham married a second time. His new wife was named Keturah. She gave birth to Zimran, Jokshin, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Jokshin had Sheba and Dedan. Dedan's descendants were the Ashurium, the Latu yep, Latushim, and the Leamim. Midian had Epha, Epher, no, Epher, Canaan, Abida, Eldea, all from the line of Keturah. But Abraham gave everything he possessed to Isaac. While he was still living, he gave gifts to the sons he had by his concubines, but then sent them away to the country of the east, putting a good distance between them and his son Isaac. Abraham lived 175 years. Then he took his final breath. He died happy at a ripe old age, full of years, and was buried with his family. His sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah, in the field of Ephron, son of Zohar, the Hittite, next to Macram, Mamre. It was the field that Abraham had bought from the Hittites. Abraham was buried next to his wife, Sarah. After Abraham's death, God blessed his son, Isaac. Isaac lived at Beer Lahai Roy. I know I always get the names, Juanita. I always get the names. <laughs> oh, I always wonder if maybe some of them are in heaven laughing at how I butcher their names. But anyway, hey, we're, we're just going to keep going, right? The family tree of Ishmael, chap chapter 25, verse 12. This is the family tree of Ishmael, son of Abraham, the son that Hagar the Egyptian, Sarah's maid, bore to Abraham. These are the names of Ishmael's sons in the order of their birth. Nebo Nebaioth, Ishmael's firstborn, Kedar, Abdil, Midsam, Misham, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadad, Timur, Tima, Jatur, Napish, Ked Kedema, all the sons of Ishmael. Their settlements and encampments were named after them. 
12 princes with their 12 tribes. Ishmael lived 137 years, and when he breathed his last and died, he was buried with his family. His children settled down all the way from Havilah near Egypt eastward to Shur in the direction of Assyria. The Ishmaelites didn't get along with any of their kin. Jacob and Esau. This is the family tree of Isaac, son of Abraham. Abraham had Isaac. Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Armenian, the Aramean, of Paddan Aram. She was the sister of Laban, the Ar Aramean. Isaac prayed hard to God for his wife because she was barren. God answered his prayer and Rebekah became pregnant. But the children tumbled and kicked inside her so much that she said, if this is the way it's going to be, why go on living? She went to God to find out what was going on. God told her, two nations are in your womb, two people butting heads while still in your body. One people will overpower the other and the younger, the older will serve the younger. When her time to give birth came, sure enough, there were twins in her womb. The first came out reddish, as if snugly wrapped in a hairy blanket. They named him Esau, which means hairy. His brother followed, his fist clutched tight to Esau's heel. They named him Jacob, which means heel. Isaac was 60 years old when they were born. The boys grew up and Esau became an expert hunter, an outdoorsman. Jacob was a quiet man preferring life indoors among the tents. Isaac loved Esau because he loved his game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. One day Jacob was cooking a stew and Esau came in from the field, starved. Esau said to Jacob, give me some of that red stew. I'm starved. That's how he came to be called Edom. Jacob said, make me a trade, my stew for your rights as, your first, as the firstborn. Esau said, I'm starving. What good is a birthright if I'm dead? Jacob said, first swear to me, and he did it. On oath, Esau traded away his rights as the firstborn. Jacob gave him bread and the stew of lentils. He ate and drank, got up and left. And that's how Esau shrugged off his rights as the firstborn. Chapter 26. There was a famine in the land, as bad as the famine during the time of Abraham. And Isaac went down to Abim Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gerar. God appeared to him and said, don't go down to Egypt. Stay where I tell you. Stay here in this land, and I'll be with you and bless you. I'm giving you and your children all these lands, fulfilling the oath that I swore to your father Abraham. I'll make your descendants as many as the stars in the sky and give them all these lands. All the nations of the earth will get a blessing for themselves through your descendants. And why? Because Abraham obeyed my summons and kept my charge, my commands, my guidelines, my teachings. So Isaac stayed put in, Ger in Gerar. The men of the place questioned him about his wife. He said, she's my sister. He was afraid to say, she's my wife. He was thinking, these men might kill me to get to Rebekah. She's so beautiful. One day after they had been there quite a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out his window and saw Isaac fondling his wife, Rebekah. Abimelech sent for Isaac and said, So she's your wife. Why did you tell us she's your sister? She's my sister. Isaac said, because I thought I might get killed by someone who wanted her. Abimelech said, but think of what you might have done to us. Given a little more time, one of the men might have slept with your wife. You would have been responsible for bringing guilt down on us. Then Abimelech gave orders to his people. Anyone who so much as lays a hand on this man or, or his wife dies. Isaac planted crops in that land and took in a huge harvest. God blessed him. The man got richer and richer by the day until he was very wealthy. He accumulated flocks and herds and many, many servants, so much so that the Philistines began to envy him. They got back at him by throwing dirt and debris into all the wells that his father's servants had dug back in the day of his father Abraham, clogging up the wells. Finally, Abimelech told Isaac, leave. You've become far too big for us. So Isaac left. He camped in the valley of Gerar and settled down there. Isaac dug again the wells which were dug in the days of his father Abraham but had been clogged up by the Philistines after Abraham's death, and he renamed them using the original names his father had given them. One day, and as Isaac's servants were digging in the valley, they came on a well of spring water. 
the shepherds of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's shepherds, claiming, This water is ours. So Isaac named the well Esek, quarrel, because they quarreled over it. They dug another well, and there was a difference over that one also. So he named it Sitna, which means accusation. He went on from there and dug yet another well, but there was no fighting over this one, so he named it Rehoboth. I hope I'm in the right spot. Yep, okay. Wide open spaces. Saying, Now God has given us plenty of space to spread out in the land. From there he went up to Beersheba. That very night God appeared to him and said, I am the God of Abraham, your father. Don't fear a thing because I am with you. I'll bless you and make your children flourish because of Abraham, my servant. Isaac built an altar there and prayed, calling on God by name. He pitched his tent and his servants started digging another well. Then Abimelech came to him from Jerir, or Gerar with Ahuzath, his advisor, and Phicol, the head of his troops. Isaac asked them, Why did you come to me? You hate me. You threw me out of your country. They said, We've realized that God is on your side. We'd like to make a deal with us, a covenant that we maintain friendly relations. We haven't bothered you in the past, we treated you so kindly and let you leave us in peace. So God's blessing be with you. Isaac laid out a feast and they ate and drank together. Early in the morning they exchanged oaths. Then Isaac said goodbye and they parted as friends. Later that same day, Isaac's servants came to him with news about the well they had been digging. We've struck water, Isaac. Uh, we've struck water. Isaac named the well Sheba, which means oath. And that's the name of the city, Beersheba oath well to this day. When Esau was 40 years old, he married Judith, daughter of Beeri, the Hittite, and Basemuth, daughter of Elam, the Hittite. They, were, they turned out to be thorns in the sides of Isaac and Rebekah. See, shouldn't be marrying more than one. Just one, one spouse, y'all. That's it. <laughs> oh, Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much that no matter how many times you've read it, we've read it, it's, it's different. We get different things out of it. And that just tells you, and that's just confirming that it's true and alive. And um, Lord, we just thank you so much for um, your protection and your love. Lord, um, I, I ask uh, special prayers for all those that have been in the path of the storm, Lord, those that, were, that are without power. Lord, that you would just comfort them, that the emergency workers and the electrical workers and all those that have to do all of that, that they would um, have strength and endurance and that you would allow them to have wisdom so that they can get everything done that they need to. Lord, I just ask that everybody gets all of the supplies and everything that they need. Um, whether it's medical supplies or whether it's um, just food and water and those type of things. Um, God, there's so many things to pray for and just not enough time, Lord, um, on this conversation that we have, Lord. But um, everything going on in the Middle East, God, the families that were lost, um, the Marines. Father, I just, um, I don't even know what to pray, but I thank you that the Holy Spirit that resides in me is making um making um, prayers on my behalf since I don't know what to say, God. And Father, um, all of those that are struggling with uh, COVID, um, whether it's right, they have it right now, or it's the, you know, the long haul uh, symptoms, God, I just ask that you would just comfort them and their families, Lord, that they would, um, that your hand would just be with them. Father, we love you. We thank you. Um, help us to be an encourager um, help us to be a light in the dark place. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hashtag live, hashtag shared. Get this out on your page. Have a great day. You have an opportunity to be grumbling and complaining about everything, or you have an opportunity to be a light, to be positive, to find somehow the silver lining and point people back towards God. Have a great day. Love y'all.